So I think I just stand here. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah I normally go up the stage, right? Okay, so uh, my name is Marcus. Actually, I'm a dietitian, works in a cancer hospital, right? 90% uh, of my patients are cancer patients. So I'm hardly to see any patient who needs sport and wife. But anyway, I'm no different from all of you. Yeah, I run. Next. A big introduction on myself, okay? Uh, actually, I ran my first half marathon last year in Standard Chartered KL, right? Yeah, I bring my own pointer. Okay? My first um, half marathon was last year, Standard Chartered, okay? And then uh, I ran few half marathons since last year until now, right? And this year, it will be my first full marathon for Finland Bridge, right? So I hope to see all of you at the finish point, right? Thanks. Okay, so when we want to talk about sport nutrition, you have to agree with this statement. This statement actually came from three professional organizations, okay? Uh, namely, American Dietetic Association, Dietitians of Canada, and American College of Sport Medicine, right? So, uh, what they say? They say, Adequate food and fluids should be consumed before, during, and after exercise or sport to help maintain blood glucose concentration during exercise and to maximize exercise performance, to balance fluid loss, and to improve recovery time. Right. So if you want to know, so today I'm I mainly want to share with you my personal experience, how I translate the science into practice. Right. Next. Okay, so this one you know already from your food actually provide you nutrition, right? So you have these few nutrients here, carbohydrates, protein and fats, and also the micronutrients, right? Fibers, mineral, vitamins and water. Don't forget about water. Water is also your nutrition, right? Okay, next. Okay, now we want to talk about exercise. Okay, you want to run. Okay, you want to run a marathon. So which kind of food that provide you energy? Okay. So we will look into three major nutrients from our food. Carbohydrates, fat and protein. Right? So I want to ask all of you which type of food provide you energy? Carbohydrate, yeah, that's good. And fat. How about protein? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So click this click. Yes, carbohydrate actually provide you uh, energy, and this is the main source of energy when you are doing exercise, right? And click. Fats also provide you energy. Yeah. So don't think that fat is bad. Okay. When you are doing exercise, actually you need fat. Okay. And then click protein. Okay, protein. You have to try to reserve your protein for uh, repairing. That means you have to use protein for building blocks. Okay, your body naturally try not to use protein as a source of energy, right? Although protein also provide you four calorie per gram of energy, but your body naturally try not to use this protein, right? So you have to ensure that you have enough. Carbohydrate, mainly carbohydrate, and also fat for your energy when you prepare for your marathon, right? Okay, next. Mm. This one a bit complicated, <laughs> so I try to explain to you in a simple way. Yeah, when you are doing exercise or you run, actually your body use these three energy system. Yeah, how your body turns the food into energy, right? So we have three systems here. The first one we call it phosphagen system, second lactic acid system, and the third one oxidative system. Okay. So, uh, anyone heard about this before? No. No. Uh, so I just okay, just click, right? Okay. So the first one phosphorus phosphagen system actually lasts for few seconds only. Okay. So we will use this adenosine triphosphate. This one only lasts for a few seconds. Okay, this is fast energy ATP. We call it ATP. And then the next one, creatinine phosphate. This one lasts for three to five minutes. So both of these is fast, fast energy, right? So both of these can found in your muscles, keep in your muscles. 
And the second one, we call it lactic acid system. This one lasts two to three minutes, right? And then this one will use your glycogen in your muscle and also glucose in your muscle. But this one actually can, uh, uh, okay, this one actually can create lactic acid. That's why when you run long, you know, you run long, you feel your muscle soreness, right? Because of accumulation of this lactic acid. But don't think that this lactic acid is a bad thing. Yeah, actually your body can turn, yeah, can recycle, recycle this lactic acid for energy. So that's why when you uh, run, you run, you actually have to uh, have to. Okay, have to do training. Yeah, training is very important. So if you want to run a marathon, you have to train your body so that your body can use this system very efficiently, right? Okay. So these two actually is a fast energy. Can you click? Okay. Fast energy that means with fast oxygen. Okay. So when your body will use this. Actually, when you run your marathon, your body needs need all these three, lah. Okay. But example like when you are running up here, up here. Okay, or you are do your sprinting, 200 meters sprinting, or maybe uh, 200 meters before the finishing point, you want to sprint, you want to run faster, right? Or maybe you want to over, overtake runners, okay? So your body actually needs this first and second, you have fast energy, okay? So without oxygen, right? And most of the time during a marathon, your body uses the third system, oxidative system, okay? Yeah, this system, last for any exercise longer than three minutes okay so this one will use your glycogen in your muscle and liver so when you do your carbo loading right like i will share with you about carbo loading you actually load this glycogen in your muscle and liver right and also you use fat triglyceride is a kind of fat okay it's stored in your adipose tissue blood and muscle okay and can you click uh, this one you need oxygen. This one is for longer exercise. Yeah, example marathon. You run marathon three to four hours. You need this. Okay, but actually during the whole time of marathon, you, your body actually utilizes these three uh, energy system. Okay, that's why it's important for you to train so that your body know how to adapt uh, with different conditions when you are in the marathon. Right? Okay. Okay, this is a picture to show you what happened. Uh, okay, so that's why sometimes uh, before before you you run a marathon, you have to think. Okay, you have to do training. Yeah, you cannot without training then you go into a marathon. Example here, you have to train your body better to use the first and the second fast the fast energy system. Yeah, example how you train, you can train like um, tempo run or interval training. Yeah, this kind of training actually train the first and second energy system. Right? Okay, tempo run, fat leg or whatever you can call it like your training. Okay. So when you fast or you use increase the intensity of your training, so your body will use the first and second system. Yeah, ATP or protein, phosphate, glycogen and glucose. So this one will create lactic acid. So don't worry about your muscle soreness. Okay? So example when you train here training, you're running up here. So you feel your muscle sore, right? Pain because of lactic acid. Uh, lactic acid. So when you're running down here, so you need recover. So this time your body will recover, recycle this lactic acid, and to restore energy in your body. Okay. So actually, the science behind your training, yeah, you have to know. So I just try to explain to you in a simple way that I hope you can understand. Okay. So anyone want to ask about this? No, ah. Uh? If no, so we just ah. Uh, one thing to highlight here, okay? So when you are running a marathon, okay, the exercise more than two hours, you your body use fifty to sixty percent of carbohydrate and forty to fifty percent of fat. Right? Some people say, Oh, you run marathon, you burn fat only. No. Okay? Your the major fuel for marathon is here the carbohydrate. But at the same time also use fat. Yeah? So whether you just one fat or you just want the carbohydrate is not correct. Yeah, you have to use both, right? Thanks. Yes. The first and second energy system without oxygen. You no need oxygen. That means it's a fast energy. Like an emergency. Yeah, understand? Make a, a big, I mean, 
any technique how to break. <laughs> okay, this one is not, not related to how you break. Actually. Okay, so you need your training because you know your body well. Whether how fast how fast you want to breathe here, what is the rate of breathing, so you have to do training. So a lot of training actually help you to know your body better. Right? So there is no uh, one size fits all, uh, or no one diet fits all. You need to do your training and to find out the most uh, proper diet, most suitable diet for yourself. Right? So what I'm sharing with you here, not exactly you have to follow. Here I just share with you the principle and the size and you go back, you have to do training and try out the diet you know, of breathing, how you breathe, how you run, how fast is your pace, you have to train. Okay? Uh, so this one is lactic threshold. So this one is just show you that okay for a trained uh, athlete or a trained runner, actually they can handle more lactic acid. Uh, so training is very important. Yeah, this chart actually shows you that training is very important before you go into the marathon, right? Next. Okay, now I'm going to share with you the diet for your training days here. Uh, can you go back? Okay, this is a nutrition actually applied for any regular exercises. So even though you are not going for a marathon, but you are a regular exerciser, you can actually follow this, right? 